So, hello there. Welcome to another Nice for Movies podcast. And in these podcasts, I talk all things movies and TV and whatever I want for about half an hour to an hour, whenever I want. And in today's podcast, I am reviewing the newest installment in the Fast and Furious franchise known as Fast X, having not seen any of the previous Fast and Furious movies. But before I do that, I should say what I say at the start of every podcast I do, that if you are watching this podcast on YouTube, hello there to my viewers, but heck, you're just not in the right place right now and you don't have enough time to watch the full podcast on YouTube, then you can also podcast out audibly on Spotify and Night of the Movies on that platform. But if you are already listening on Spotify, hello there to podcast listeners, then you can also podcast out visually on my YouTube channel, and Night of the Movies on that platform. Likewise, wherever you might be watching or listening to the podcast, if you enjoy the podcast, please, you know, like and subscribe, and also leave some feedback so I know what to improve on in future podcasts, and give me some topics and ideas you want me to talk about in future podcasts as well. And just before I get into my review of Fast X, just before I get into the topic of discussion in this podcast today, I should say one other thing that I'm feeling a little under the weather today as I'm recording this podcast because of hay fever. Yes, we are at that time of the year again. About this time last year, I was doing YouTube videos and I sounded very bummed up and very ill. And guess what? I was. And it was all down to hay fever. And it's upon me again. You know, I'm not quite bad today, but I did wake up very sniffly and I've taken some hay fever tablets, but I'm still feeling a bit fuzzy right now just because that's what hay fever does to you so if I start getting some ideas jumbled up more than I usually do I mean I always I, I don't think I really have coherent podcasts whatsoever but if this podcast is less coherent than it usually is I do apologize it's because of hay fever blame that bloody annoying though I don't like summer because of hay fever but anyway let's get into the topic of discussion in this podcast today and that is my review of fast X, the 10th installment, as far as I'm aware, in the Fast and Furious franchise. And I should wait right here. I know I've already said it already in this podcast, and I know it's in the title of this podcast as well, but I'm going to wait for it anyway. I haven't seen any previous Fast and Furious movie, and that's including the spin-offs. I haven't seen Tokyo Drift, and I also haven't seen Hobbs and Shaw. I almost saw Hobbs and Shaw when it came out in the cinema back in 2019, from what I remember. But I chose not to because I hadn't seen any of the Fast and Furious movies, and I thought I was going to be confused. So, you may be asking the question, why did he go and watch Fast X, and why did he go and watch Fast and Furious 10? Well, that's a good question, and I don't really have a good answer to it, if being completely honest. The reason was mainly that I've got a bit of free time in my hands right now, and I felt like going to the cinema, and I felt like going to see my mates, because I haven't been to the cinema with them in a while, and this was a film that was taking up most show times, and this was a film that I thought they would be up for watching as well. Like, one of my mates has seen all the Fast and Furious movies beforehand, he's a big fan of all the Fast and Furious movie, movies leading up to Fast 7, doesn't really like it after Fast 7, doesn't really like any movies after that one, but at the same time though, he's seen all of them, so he was up for going to see this new Fast and Furious movie, and then the other friend that I went to go and watch the movie with as well, isn't, you know, he's like me, he hasn't seen any other Fast and Furious movies, so we, it was a bit of an interesting experience watching it with someone like me, who hadn't seen any of the other Fast and Furious films, and then watching it with someone who's seen all the other Fast and Furious movies, including the spin-offs. And that's why I want to go and watch it as well, because I want to see it with my mates, and also, I always kind of wondered what a Fast and Furious movie is like. I haven't really seen any of them before. I think I've seen five minutes, and what I think was Fast and Furious 5 on TV about four years ago now, and I barely remember it. And so I haven't seen any Fast and Furious movie before. And I've always, yeah, I've always wondered what one was like. I mean, from the trailers that I saw of them, it never looked like my sort of film, and well, it still isn't, but I've always wondered what one was like. And so that is why I went to go and watch Fast X even though I hadn't seen any of the previous Fast and Furious movies. 
And just before I give my opinion on FastX, although you might have guessed it already, but just before I give my opinion on FastX, I should say this. I have seen movies in franchises, you know, which have been further down the line in a franchise, having not seen the previous movies, you know, if you get what I mean. Where, like, for instance, I remember watching Mission Impossible Fallout in the cinema, having not seen... Well, I had seen the Mission Impossible film before that, you know, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, but I hadn't seen any of the Mission Impossible films before that, though. And I still had a great time Mission Impossible Fallout. I ended up loving that film at the cinema, and I remember watching Mission Impossible Rogue Nation, you know, the fifth film in the Mission Impossible franchise, at home, and also really enjoying that film as well. And I then uh, take a look at the Bond franchise, with Spectre. I remember watching that when it came out on DVD in 2016 and having a really good time with that film, even though I hadn't seen Skyfall, Quantum of Solace and Casino Royale before that when I first watched Spectre. And the thing is though, all the Daniel Craig Bond movies though, you know, Casino Royale, Quantum of Solace, Skyfall, Spectre and No Time to Die are all narratively connected, you know, and yet I still watch Spectre and really enjoyed it. To be honest, I still enjoy Spectre and I enjoy it more than most people, it seems. And, you know, I enjoyed it back in 2016 when I first watched it, having not seen Skyfall, Quantum of Solace, and Casino Royale. And then I also remember watching Captain America Civil War for the first time back in 2017, and really enjoying it back then. Like, I'm not a big fan of it now, but I remember really enjoying it when I first saw it, and I hadn't really seen many MCU films by that point, and I hadn't seen Captain America the First Avenger and Captain America the Winter Soldier before I saw Captain America Civil War, and yet, when I first watched Captain America Civil War, I was entertained by it. I liked it. I don't really now. I've got some problems with it now. But when I first saw it, I enjoyed it. And I hadn't seen the other Captain America films before it. And also, I hadn't really seen many Marvel movies before it, including all the Iron Man films. I'd seen the first Iron Man, but I didn't remember watching Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3. And yet, they're all important for Captain America Civil War. So you understand the point I'm making. I've watched other movies and other franchises before where they've been further down the line in the franchise, and yet I still enjoyed the movie, if you get what I mean. And yet, when I went to go and watch Fast X at the cinema last night, I ended up hating it. <laughs> I really despise this movie. But, again, take my opinion with a grain of salt because I haven't seen any of the other Fast and Furious movies. I haven't seen any of them. So, this is a bit of an unlive opinion, and it's a bit of a jokey review as well. Although... Same time though, like what he mentioned, I've seen other franchise movies, you know, where the movie's been further down the line in a franchise and still enjoyed it, but I didn't really get anything out of Fast X. I enjoyed about the first five minutes of the film, and then after the first five minutes though, and about the sixth minute, I was going, oh no, we've still got two hours and a half of this. Just try and get through it, try and get through it, and I almost fell asleep numerous times, I wasn't counting after a while, and God, it was terrible. Like, it made Black Adam bearable for me. And, you know, the things about Black Adam is that's a bad movie, but it's bearable now. After watching Fast X, it's a bearable movie. The things about Fast X is it's unbearable. It makes Black Adam look like a pretty damn good film. And it makes Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, a film I also hated, look pretty damn good as well. <sighs> I just really struggled with this film because of so, so, so many reasons. I mean, the filmmaking is astoundingly bad. The dialogue feels like it's been written by an AI machine and by... A really bad AI at that. And also, action sequences have way too many edits in them. You know, I'm one of those people where if you start cutting too many times in an action sequence, you've completely lost me. And the action sequences and the car chase in this movie are so incoherent that I just didn't care. I wouldn't know what was going on in them. I didn't know who was who in certain parts and the CGI and some action sequence as well is really bad. And this is like one of the... This, is, this movie, according to Google, has a budget of $340 million, which is more than most Marvel movies nowadays. And yet, you know, there's some CGI Marvel movies which has been quite poor recently, but there's also been some CGI Marvel movies which have been pretty good, like in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, which I reviewed recently, and yet the CGI in this movie is 
really bad. Like, it's really bad, which is surprising. Like, what did they spend the money on? I'm was it the actors? Because this film has got a whole load of actors in it, loads of famous actors embarrassing themselves. And I'll get on to that very, very shortly, don't worry. But at the same time, the CGI was surprisingly poor. And there were so many moments where it just didn't look real. And yet, I saw on YouTube about half an hour ago that... I saw, I saw on YouTube about half an hour ago B-roll from the film, you know, behind-the-scenes footage of them filming this movie and doing all the stunts and all the car chases. And I thought, oh, but well, they actually did stunts in real life. Wow, they actually did proper stunts, practically. And yet it doesn't look like that in the film, though. And it just looked fake. The CGI was really bad. I know I've said that quite a few times, but it really surprised me when I looked at the budget and I went, but the CGI did not look good whatsoever. In fact, there is one use of CGI involving a plane in the final sequence of the film, which looked like it came out of a video game from about 10 years ago. It was that bad. And also, the characters... I don't think there even are characters in this film. I'm pretty sure that the actors just got a camera placed in front of them and were told to just do whatever they want, <laughs> you know? Because no one really feels like they're acting in this film, apart from Jason Momoa, which I'll get onto very shortly. But no one really feels like they're acting in this film whatsoever. And it feels like they're all just friends with Vin Diesel. And that's why they're in this movie. And... It doesn't really feel like there was a script either, and apparently there was, according to the credits of the movie, like the credits came up, and I was I was astounded to see that there was a screenplay for the film, because so much of the dialogue is so corny and cheesy and so badly written, but also, the acting's really poor as well, and no one really feels like they're actually acting, they all just feel like they're having a conversation, or they're just being told to improvise, and, you know, it just feels like you're watching people you know it doesn't feel like you're watching characters it's really bad that and i i don't understand why there's so many characters in this film as well like again i haven't seen any other fast and furious movies so maybe a lot of these characters were in previous films but i don't understand the purpose of, the purpose of real license character i quite like real life as an actress when i've seen him and i haven't seen him loads but i quite like her as an actress and i've got nothing against her but why is she in this film? I don't understand that. I don't understand the point of half the kites in the film. It just feels so overstuffed. And also, it doesn't feel like they're acting again. Like, John Cena is in this film. And, you know what? I kind of enjoy John Cena when I watch him in movies nowadays. I watched him in The Suicide Squad, and he was quite good as Peacemaker. I think James Gunn brought the best from that film. And also, I watched him in some of the Peacemaker TV shows as well, and he was good in that show. But the thing is, he's just playing the same character he played in Peacemaker. I was watching it going, does he realise this is basically the same performance he does when he does Peacemaker? I mean, that's the way I saw it, and I didn't feel he was that good. And Michelle Rodriguez, who is an actress which I really enjoy watching in the likes of Avatar and also in Dungeons and Dragons, doesn't really feel like her heart it anymore. A lot of the actors seem a bit embarrassed to be there, if I'm being completely honest, and just kind of feel like they're doing it. Well, at least is what I read it as. They felt like they were doing it because they're Vin Diesel's mate and he's the person behind this franchise, from what I'm hearing. And as for Vin Diesel, I think Vin Diesel is a good actor. Well, actually, I don't. I think he's been good in some films beforehand. I think he was good in Saving Private Ryan. He's not in loads of that film, and spoilers here for Saving Private Ryan, although it's your own fault if you haven't seen it by now. The film did come out in 1998, but he dies in the first hour of that film. He has quite an emotional death scene. But in this film, his acting is so poor. It, it, it's, it's kind of atrocious, his acting, because... Most of his acting, he doesn't really give any facial expressions when he's acting. He doesn't give any emotion. Literally, he's got the same facial expression throughout most of the film. Honestly, there's no shock in his acting. There's no surprise in his acting. There's no most in his acting. It just felt like, again, a camera was put on him and the director was a bit too afraid to give him any direction because it sounds like Vin Diesel's a you know, the driving force, no pun intended, behind this franchise. So, they just put a camera on him and went, 
Then do your thing as Dom Toretto, whatever the character's name is, shows you again how much I know about this franchise, and he just doesn't act. He doesn't act, and it doesn't help when Jason Momoa is the villain's film, as Dante, you know, Jason Momoa as Dante is the villain's film, and he is doing a great performance. Jason Momoa is by far and away the best part of the film. He's the only, he's, oh, he's, I can't speak, he's the only one in this film who's doing real acting. Like, Helen Mirren pops at one point in the film, and Rita Moreno, I think that's how you pronounce the actress's name, apology if it's not, they pop in the, they, you know, she pops in the film as well. Both Rita Moreno and Helen Mirren pop in the movie. And the thing is, they're doing good acting as well, but you expect it from them too, because they're both Academy Award winning actresses. The thing is with Jason Momoa though, is I didn't know he could be this good. Like, I've seen Jason Momoa as Aquaman, he's so enjoyable to watch as Aquaman, and I also saw him as Carl Drogo on Game of Thrones, and he was really good in that show. You know, quite intimidating to watch. It was only in one season of Game of Thrones, slight spoilers there, but, you know, he was good in that show. But he's very different in this film than he is as Aquaman and than he is as Khal Drogo in Game of Thrones. And in a good way, showing his versatility as an actor. He's having a lot of fun with it and he's doing the forms which everybody in this film should be doing. He's having so much fun and he's making fun of the whole situation. You know, a lot of the film is just about family. That's what Don Teresa keeps saying. It's all about family. I've got to protect my family. And the thing is, though, Jason Miller as Dante, the villain, comes on screen and goes, Dom, look, it's all about family. And everyone, in this, everyone now in this film is family. Everyone who meets Dom is family family he's making fun of it it's quite good to watch and also he seems to be having a whale of a time with it and you know what i had a whale of a time watching jason momoa every single time every single time jason momoa was on screen in the film i enjoyed it because of him i really like jason momoa as a person i've seen him on talk shows as well and he just he seems to just embrace life you know and he seemed like he was having a ball in this movie. And he is the best performance. He gives the best performance. Daniela Melchua, I might pronounce her name, I'm going to apologize for am, who played Ratcatch 2 in the Suicide Squad. Another Suicide Squad actor in here, because also John Cena is in the Suicide Squad. She is good in this film as well. Although, I didn't really know what she was going for, and she felt like it was in a different movie. She got quite emotional at one point. I was like, you're giving more of an emotional performance than anybody else in this film. But she's good in it as well. But... The best performance is by far and away, like what he mentioned, Jason Momoa. My God, I like that character. <laughs> Mainly because he played it so well and he embraced all the characteristics, however far-fetched and dumb they were. <laughs> all of his characterization is just so stupid and silly, but he embraces it. And Jason Momoa... Seems like like he's having a great time in the film. I had a great time watching him. Everybody else I could do without. And like so many performances and all the characters follow in different movies. The movie's pulling in all these different directions as well. Literally travels all over the world like one of those bad Roger Moore Bond films from the 1980s. Like Moonraker. I hate Moonraker because it just goes all over the world to all these different countries and it feels like Roger Moore is getting a holiday from this Bond movie. And that's what it felt like in Fast Sex. It felt like most of the actors were getting a holiday. Again, it's the whole thing like I said before. An actor, a camera is just being placed on these actors and they're just being told to do whatever they want and then they can go and explore the cities that they're filming in for the rest of the day. Like, Loads of different locations in the film. I'm not entirely sure why the film is going to all these different locations and pulling in all these different directions. It is unfocused on another level. Like, I I thought Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania was unfocused. Again, like before, Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania looks like a pretty good movie compared to this one. <laughs> because... <sighs> this movie is just so unfocused and so all over the place it's so messy it's just it's so incoherent and that's not just in the action but it's also in the storytelling i didn't understand what the story was hence why i haven't given a plot synopsis in this podcast because i don't know what the story was i watched the film and even though yes i haven't seen the previous however many fast and furious movies before and i still should be able to understand what the story is in this one each Fast and Furious movie, each film of the franchise, you know, whatever franchise, should be able to stand on its own two feet. And I'm not sure if this Fast and Furious movie does. And I just thought so much of this movie annoyed me. It's so unbelievable as well. 
There's so many parts of this film which I just didn't believe in, and so many action sequences which betray Dom, you know, Vin Diesel's character, as this superhero, and that he's got a car which is completely indestructible. And I'm watching it going, I'm sorry, wouldn't he be dead by this point? Wouldn't the car blown up? How is the car still being used and still fine and still zooming all over the place? I, I don't get it. And like there was one moment in the film during this big bombastic car chase sequence and I turned to my friend who was seeing other people's Fast and Furious movies and who is a huge car enthusiast. I turned to him and went, would that actually happen during one of these chase sequences? He went, no, no, it wouldn't. No, it definitely wouldn't. And, I mean, I'm not into cars. And even I realised at one point how unbelievable it was. And I don't mind if it's a bit unbelievable. I don't mind if it goes a bit crazy. You know, one of my favourite movies of all time is The Blues Brothers from 1980. And that movie has a real, really silly and bombastic and unbelievable car chase. But it embraces that. The thing is, all the car chases in this film are really far-fetched. And it doesn't feel like they embrace it. Though. It doesn't feel like they embrace the silliness of this film. Like The only person who does is Jason Momoa, like I already mentioned. Everything else feels like it's taking itself too seriously. And I really... <sighs> It really stretched me because, you know, again, I don't mind if some of the action sequences are unbelievable, but you've you've got to make it somewhat believable. You've got to ground some of it in verisimilitude. And if you don't know that word is, look it up. But you've got to ground some of this film in verisimilitude and it doesn't. It just it's so unrealistic that I didn't believe in anything. And because I didn't believe in all the action sequences, because some of the action sequences overcrowd the movie, I didn't believe in any of the characters, any of their emotions, any of their motivations. I didn't believe in anything. Oh god, it was just really annoying to watch. And also, there's a moment in the film where there's a bat cave, and I honestly thought that Batman was gonna show up. I mean, spoiler alert, he doesn't. You know, but, you know, that's not really a spoiler, but you get the point I'm making. I thought that Batman was going to show up at one point. And also, there's one car chase in the film which feels like a fan-made Mad Max movie. It's just so bad, and it made me long to watch a Mad Max film. Any Mad Max film, just, God, I hated this movie so much. And I know I haven't seen any of the Fast and Furious movies, but... I was hoping to at least be entertained and, you know, to answer Russell Crowe's question in Gladiator. Are you entertained? That's what he says in Gladiator. Um, no, I wasn't. I was not entertained. I was not entertained by this film. I wasn't going into it expecting a masterpiece or expecting to see the next, you know, to see my new favourite film of 2023. I wasn't expecting that. I was just expecting to have a good time, and I didn't have a good time, though. And I think that any film's biggest issue, it doesn't provide you with an enjoyable time, then it's failing. <laughs> that's how you know a film has properly failed. And that's how I knew that Fast X failed. I really hated it. But if you're a Fast and Furious fan, and you haven't seen this film yet, I would still... I applaud you to go and watch it. Go and check it out. Just because I'm saying this doesn't mean anything. You know, I'm happy I saw the film, though. Even though I really despise it, I'm happy I saw the movie because now I know what a Fast and Furious film is like. And now I know that they're not for me, you know. But I am glad I saw it, though. I mean, it's atrocious. And apparently it had a director as well. Louis Leterre was a director of the film. Although you wouldn't believe it because it didn't feel like at one point there's any one singular director's vision. It feels like there's too many cooks in the kitchen, if you get what I mean. There's too many people putting their hands into the editing of the film. And like I've already mentioned, the editing and some of the action sequences is so incoherent. It feels like someone just pressed on the editing board during the post-production of the film. This, just did this on the editing board and the post-production. 
put all these scenes together in the film, there was no real coherent structure. It just went, send it off and see what happens. And they felt like they did that with the action sequences as well. There's so many moments in the action sequences which don't join with one another, which don't have any coherent structure. I didn't even know what was ha happening in the action sequences. I didn't know what was happening throughout most of the film. And for that reason, I didn't really care about any of them. I didn't really care about anything happening and I really, really, really struggled with it. But hey, maybe that's my own fault because I've just joined a franchise. I watched, you know, this is my first time in the Fast and Furious franchise. And what, it's the 10th installment? Although from what I've heard, it actually might be the 11th installment because of Hobbs and Shaw as well. So yeah, I joined a franchise way too late in the game. So. All my dislike in the film, it's probably down to my own film. But still, I wanted to have a good time. And I didn't. And that's the thing that is probably most obsessing about this film. That it didn't even give me an enjoyable time in the cinema. Yeah, it is what it is. And so, all in all, I'm going to say that Fast X, I'm going to say that it's a 1.5 out of 10. I'm giving it a 1.5 out of 10 because it's an absolutely atrocious and just awful film. But the 0.5, it's Jason Momoa, who's just having such a good time. And you have a good time watching them as well. I did have a good time watching them anyway. And I'm glad to see Jason Momoa show more range. I'd love to see him in other movies. Oh, he was great in June as well. There was another film that he was in that I forgot at the top of my head. You know, he was so good in June. Again, showing his range. The fact that he can go from Game of Thrones to Aquaman to June to this. It just shows you how good of an actor he is. It shows you how good of an actor he is. And he's the best part of his movie. I will say that at times he... It does feel like he's doing an imitation of Heath Ledger's Joker from The Dark Knight. But it still works. It didn't hugely bother me that. You know, in the grand scheme of things, with everything else going on in this movie, that was the least problems going on. Also, there's some weird cameos in this film. I'm not going to spoil who, just in case you haven't seen the movie yet. I know it's been out for a while now, but just in case. But, yeah, some cameos which... Really took me out of it. Again, I never felt like I was watching characters. I felt like I was just watching actors do things. You know, I know this is going to sound quite harsh to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. I am not surprised that Vin Diesel was is only playing a talking tree in the MCU. I'm not surprised that he hasn't got more of a role in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I'm not surprised that he only got him to do to play a talking tree because. The thing is, he can't act. At least that's what I got from this film. He doesn't act. And in Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, when he plays Talking Tree, when he plays Groot, all he has to say is, I am Groot, in numerous different ways. And, yeah, not surprised that <laughs> they caught him for that now because they're probably worried about after seeing his acting in the Fast and Furious franchise. I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's just bad in this film. Maybe he's good in other movies. But I thought Vin Diesel did a really poor performance. And I thought all the performances were really poor as well. Even from actors I really like. You know, I thought most of the performances were poor. And I thought the filmmaking was astoundingly bad. I thought the action sequences were incoherent. Mash, mishmashes of random things happening and the CGI was really awful as well and the dialogue felt like it was written by an AI and not a good AI at that and, uh, there's just so many things I disliked about the film and you know I don't really know what this film was aiming for but then you know take my opinion granted, so do whatever you want to do I'm not somebody who's a fan of this franchise. I haven't seen any of the other movies. But now I know that this franchise isn't for me. And now I have no intention to watch any of the Fast and Furious movies going forward. And also, now I will probably not watch any of the Fast and, past Fast and Furious movies either. Because they just look like they're not for me. And Fast X confirmed that. I suspected that all along and Fast X confirmed it. I'm happy to sort the cinema because now I can finally see if it's in a Fast and Furious movie. But now I can also say that I don't know ever, ever want to watch another one. And yeah, this movie is absolutely awful. But if you love it, that's great. And if you're a Fast and Furious fan and you haven't seen this movie yet, check it out. I would recommend it for Fast and Furious fans. I just, yeah.
I hated it. And so, all in all, like you've already mentioned, I'm going to say that Fast X, I'm going to say that it's a 1.5 out of 10 from me. Ooh, yeah, what a rating. Anyway, guys, that is it for today's podcast. Hopefully, you enjoyed this podcast. And also, um, if you haven't yet, uh, like and subscribe on this podcast and do whatever you want to do. Spread the word about the podcast if you enjoy it, of course. And also, leave me your thoughts on Fast and Furious in the comment section below. You know, tell me whether you like the Fast and Furious franchise or not. Maybe tell me that I'm wrong on the Fast and Furious franchise. And let me know your thoughts on Fast X as well. I'd love to hear from some people who really enjoyed the movie. You know, one thing I almost got to mention, and I'm going to briefly mention here, is that I did watch in a cinema, which was three quarters full, and people were laughing along with the movie. So maybe my bad time of the film, it's just me. You know, I don't know. Maybe it is, maybe it is. Anyway, yes, thank you as always for watching or listening to the podcast today. And like I said before, if you haven't yet, please do like and subscribe. And also look forward to many more podcasts coming very, very soon on this channel. And yeah, so this is it. I suppose I will see you guys again soon. But bye for now. Bye.